Hello everyone, welcome to Welcome Tech channel. My name is Elisaveta and today we will be talking about the EB1A and EB2 NAW visas that we talk a lot about in this channel. And today we will be um, spelling out the financial part of relocation to the US. Of course, it's not cheap, it's an expensive thing and you will need to plan your budget the best way. So this is why I have decided to make a separate video about the financial part of getting to the US through EB1 and EB2 visas because they are similar in the process of getting them. And um, yeah, so I will uh, talk about all the fees and all the expenses that you will need to take. So stay tuned. We will talk about the financial part of getting these visas and for that I think you will need to have some information about uh, the process of getting those visas because I will just shortly talk about that today. So if you do not know the process of getting the EB1 and EB2 visas, please um, watch our different video we have recorded before so you have a little bit more detail about that. So, uh, talking about the prepar uh, talking about the process of getting the visa, this will consist of two main stages. So, the first stage will be preparing the documentation for uh, sending it to USCIS, which is like the Immigration Service of the US, and after that, uh, you will be um, granted. So, sort of like somewhat of an endorsement. So you, if your petition will be approved, then you can go to stage two. So this will consist of preparing your documentation, which will be recommendation letter, beneficiary statements, uh, like criteria and uh, how you satisfy them, maybe national interest uh, documentation and so on. So also petitions and then sending it to the US, USCIS to check. Right, and to give them their feedback, uh, give you them their feedback on your documentation. So, talking about that, when you are preparing the documentation, of course, most probably you will be writing them in English from scratch. The translation will not be needed. But sometimes, when people are building their criteria and their evidence to the criteria, they use the material, uh, they use the documentation that was originally made in Eng uh, not in English. Right, for example, you work contracts, maybe some, uh, I don't know, public activities, YouTube videos that are not in English language. This means that you will have to translate them by certified translators so they know that these are legit, right? Because they can read not in English and they will need to have some evidence that these are officially translated. So you will need to pay about... Um, I think it's usually about $200 to $600 for, for translations. When you are ready with all your petitions, with all your documentation, you will need to send it to USAS. And this thing is about that, that you will need to send it physically from the US uh, to most probably like Texas, and you will need to pay the uh, sending fee. It's about $30 per case. Uh, besides that, when you send your case, you also send your credit card information and it's very, or not your credit card information, but the credit card information of the person who is applying it. The, the, this is important that the credit card should be uh, the US credit card, so it's not, not, uh, not every, every credit card will do. You will need to pay uh, fee which is seven hundred dollars and also if you are going through a premium processing which um, gives you an opportunity to get your decision after 15 days instead of a year uh, you will need to pay uh, extra twenty five hundred dollars what is also important to notice is that it's not usually a thing when we are talking about the EB2 and AW. There is a premium processing thing that lasts about 45 days, but uh, there is no actual sense 
at this point to get these uh, premium processing because usually mm, uh, you will get your decision fastly but you will not be able to uh, sign up for an interview so fast so it doesn't really make sense sometimes and these are i think the biggest uh expenses that you will need to uh, intake uh then when your petition is approved uh, and uh, this may not be approved straight away you will may uh, you may have some rfe for example which is like uh they need more documentation from you you will collect it and then uh, send again which are like thirty dollars more uh after that uh you after your petition is approved you will uh, be granted a welcome letter you will need to pay for that uh, and you will need to then uh, sign up for an interview and the welcome letter it's fee it's about 325 dollars and besides that uh, there is one more thing that it's called affidavit of support which costs 120 dollars but it's not always needed but you will need to still mm, i think plan this money so these are the total fees of getting uh, an eb1 and eb2 visas if you have any more questions please leave them in the comments and if you're interested in eb1 or EB2 and a W visa consultation if you want to evaluate your chances and understand your uh, way of getting this visa please sign up for a free consultation the our contact information is down below thank you so much for watching